The tape was recorded six days after the Watergate break-in. Nixon can be heard ordering his chief of staff, Haldeman, to sabotage the FBI investigation. Essentially what it was, was that the President of the United States had consensually agreed to join a conspiracy, stating it in lawyer language, consensually agreed to join a conspiracy to hide relevant information from the FBI. Nixon's staunchest defender called a press conference as soon as the transcript of the smoking gun tape was released. With great reluctance and uh, deep personal sorrow, I am prepared to conclude that the magnificent public career of Richard Nixon must be terminated involuntarily. And I shall support <clears throat> those portions of Article I of the Bill of Impeachment adopted by the Judiciary Committee, which are sustained by the evidence. In the House of Representatives, there is not a member left who thinks the President will not be impeached, and apparently not many who will side with him when it comes to a vote. Before the President made his disclosure of new evidence yesterday, the biggest vote against him in the Judiciary Committee was 28 to 10. But by today, his 10 supporters had all changed their minds. Crowds began to gather outside the White House, waiting for the end. First he was ready to do it, and then he would meet with the family, and the family, understandably, would be very much opposed to his quitting. And that's the term he used, quit. Uh, and so he delayed. Vice President Ford lunched with senior Republicans at the Capitol Hill Club, and they agreed that Nixon had to be made to face facts. Well, it was decided at the luncheon that uh, a group of three, Senator Hugh Scott, the Republican leader in the Senate, Senator Goldwater, one of the most senior members, Congressman John Rhodes, the House Republican leader, went to the White House and had a summit meeting. Uh, with uh, President Nixon. Uh, it's well known that uh, the situation on the floor of the House is, has deteriorated to the extent that uh, impeachment is really a foregone conclusion. Senator Goldwater told Nixon that out of 100 senators, he had only four firm votes left. That same evening, August the 7th, Nixon finally confirmed to his family that he was about to resign. And a White House photographer was invited in to record the moment. The president began to say goodbye to his inner circle. He said, jail isn't the worst thing in the world. I mean, that's where you can get some, some peace of mind and a chance to do some good writing, after all. I mean, Gandhi and... Lenin and others did a lot of their best writing in jail. Having announced he would resign at noon, Nixon made his farewell speech to his staff. But the greatness comes and you're really tested when you take some knocks, some disappointments, when sadness comes. Because only... If you've been in the deepest valley, can you ever know how magnificent it is to be on the highest mountain? At least for part of the speech, he was looking directly at me. And of course, I could tell that he wasn't looking at me because there's that slightly glazed, half-glazed look of somebody who's, whose mind is behind his eyes, which are simply there. We want you to continue and to serve. It, his, his, eyes are really turned inward on his thoughts. 
Always give your best. Never get discouraged. Never be petty. Always remember, others may hate you. But those who hate you don't win unless you hate them. And then you destroy yourself. His words, uh, you know, they're very, they had a very spontaneous quality to him. It was like the, the great insight of his whole presidency at the very last moment of his presidency. One month after his resignation, Richard Nixon was pardoned by President Ford for all the offenses against the United States he has committed or may have committed. 